إلا وأنتم مسلمون يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم أعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما All praises due to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the master of the whole universe I bear witness that there is no God worthy of our worship our submission our true love except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and I bear witness that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is the last of the messengers of Allah may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless our session Allahumma amin ya rabbal alameen and welcome back to another Tuesday and uh, thank you everyone for your commitment for your great efforts for your sacrifice for your time which is the most precious commodity that we have and uh, alhamdulillah rabbil alameen that Allah had allowed us Allah had enabled us to come together for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to get the, the the education and the knowledge from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and from the book and the, of Allah and the sunnah of the messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam as we used to have recently that we used to have our imams alhamdulillah and recently we used to start our session by the recitation of the Quran and before we go to the recitation of the Quran let me just welcome uh, our Imams, inshallah Rabbil Alameen, Imam Hisham Salam from Egypt, and he is re the reciter of the Quran and the Imam in the religious ministry of Al Awqaf, Al and he is graduated from Al Azhar al Sharif. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless him and bless all the scholars and sheikhs of Al Azhar and keep it as our minaret and our uh, uh, distinct sign and distinct. A, a model for teaching Islam all over the world. Allahumma amin ya rabbal alameen. And also I just wanted to welcome our Imam, Imam Jalal Abdul Wahid, Imam Masjid al-Rahman in Tartan Spring. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless them all. Allahumma amin ya rabbal alameen. Assalamu alaikum our Shaykhs. Wa alaikum as wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Assalamu alaikum Sayyidina Shaykh Jalal. Wa alaikum as wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Ahlan wa sallam Sayyidina Kareem. Ya marhab. Barakallahu feekum, jazakumullahu khairan. And really, I would like, I cannot wait to hear the recitation of Imam Hisham. And uh, inshallah, I, I, I believe that all of our brothers and sisters are going to enjoy the recitation. Then we will get back to the introduction of our topic tonight, inshallah. Yes, Imam Hisham, you have the microphone, inshallah. <laughs> بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم يا أيها الذين آمنوا لا تقدموا بين يدي الله ورسوله واتقوا الله إن الله سميع عليم يا أيها الذين آمنوا لا ترفعوا أصواتكم فوق صوت النبي ولا تجهروا له بالقول كجهر بعضكم لبعض أن تحبط أعمالكم ولا تجهروا له بالقول كجهر بعضكم لبعض أن تحبط أعمالكم وأنتم لا تشعرون إن الذين يغضون أصواتهم عند رسول الله أولئك الذين امتحن الله قلوبهم للتقوى لهم مغفرة وأجر عظيم إن الذين ينادونك من وراء الحجرات أكثرهم لا يعقلون ولو أنهم صبروا حتى تخرج إليهم لكان خيرا لهم والله غفور رحيم 
يا ايها الذين امنوا ان جاءكم فاسق بنبا فتبينوا ان تصيبوا قوما بجهاله فتصبحوا على ما فعلتم نادمين وَاعْلَمُوا أَنَّ فِيكُمْ رَسُولَ اللَّهِ لَوْ يُطِيعُكُمْ فِي كَثِيرٍ مِنَ الْأَمْرِ لَعَنِتُمْ وَلَكِنَّ اللَّهَ حَبَّبَ إِلَيْكُمُ الْإِيمَانَ ولكن الله حبب إليكم الإيمان وزينه في قلوبكم وكره إليكم الكفر والفسوق والعصيان أولئك هم الراشدون فضلا من الله ونعمة والله عليم حكيم وإن طائفتان من المؤمنين قتتلوا فأصلحوا بينهما فإن بغت إحداهما على الأخرى فقاتل التي تبغي حتى تفيء إلى أمر الله فإن فاءت فأصلحوا بينهما بالعدل وأقسطوا إن الله يحب المقسطين إنما المؤمنون إخوة فأصلحوا بين أخويكم واتقوا الله لعلكم ترحمون صدق الله العظيم إن شاء الله جزاكم الله خيرا بارك الله فيكم الحمد لله رب العالمين This is the, the beauty of the Quran and with the beautiful recitation we can feel that Imam Hisham is taking us up to the skies ما شاء الله and to the point that he is you know charging our batteries our hearts with the spiritual oxygen in the Quran. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us the blessings of the Quran. Allahumma ameen, ya Rabbil alameen. I just wanted tonight to give you a little bit of hints before we listen to our Imam, Imam Jalal, to know more about this topic. And I believe that most of you, alhamdulillah, got the message of the title, the invitation for the Zoom meeting, but just I wanted to take it from another perspective. You know, as human beings, as people, we are the people that we value, we appreciate the commodities that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had gifted us on this earth. For instance, you have lots of people are, you know, appreciating the, the, the value of gold and silver, the, the value of the metal, the value of even water, subhanAllah Rabbil Alameen. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had granted us some of the commodities on earth in our life. And when we ran after those commodities so we can find alternatives, we can find some you know, commodity that we can uh, do mining, that we can do some of the discoveries, that we can do some of the efforts, we build factories, we go outside to the desert, so we can have some of those discoveries that will help us to support those commodities. But actually there is a commodity that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had granted us in this life cannot be restored, unfortunately. And this type of commodity, if we ran out of it, we cannot get them back. And it cannot be recycled and it cannot be purchased. It cannot be getting back. Once this commodity is gone, it is done. 
and no way to get them back. And this commodity is the time. Actually, the time is the most precious commodity that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had gifted us. And from the Islamic perspective, we have lots of texts, lots of chapters, lots of, you know, uh, ahadith, prophetic statements from the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam while he is directing us to the importance of time. The time that we have, every person that Allah had created has a particular fixed amount of days, amount of years, amount of seconds that he is going to live. And that's why the Quranic teachings came to urge us to look after those moments and not to waste our time. And the scholars also had the sense of urgency and courtesy in their writings to encourage the Muslim Ummah how to look after the time and invest each and every moment to the point that you might find one of the great scholars in the Islamic history named Al-Hasan al-Basri, the very known scholar, when he describing our time, our life. And he said, Ya bin Adam, innama anta ayyam, fa'idha dhahaba yawmun, dhahaba ba'duk. He said, oh, the son of Adam, you are just in numbered days, moments, few days. If one day passed, that means peace of you had passed. On this session, we will focus, we'll try to concentrate on that principle, the time, the importance of the time in the Quran, in the Sunnah, in the life of the companions of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, our Imam, Imam Jalal. Let me start with that question. What do you think? What is the first impression will come to your mind when we say time? Yes, Imam. أعوذ بالله السميع العليم من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين All praise due to Allah عز وجل We seek his help and his forgiveness My dear respected Imam Ahmed Ali May Allah bless you and your families Amin يا رب العالمين My dear respected uh, Imam Hisham may Allah, may Allah سبحانه وتعالى Bless you about this uh, beautiful and wonderful recitation And my dear respected brothers and sisters will come again, you know, with the with this beautiful and wonderful meeting every Tuesday, Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen, to gather us together in the in the table of the Quran and the table of the hadith of the Prophet of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam at this beautiful at the table of the how to understand and how to implement this in our life. Um and Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen about Al-Azhar and the people of Al-Azhar and the men of Al-Azhar and uh, for Imam Ahmed Ali and also Imam Muhammad Yahya, may Allah bless him. We cannot forgive him or we cannot forget him at all. And also Imam Hisham. And I have the honor, Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen, that I studied, Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen, all from uh, Al-Azhar with uh, Professor Ahmed uh, uh, Abu Saif. So my dear respected brothers and sisters, when we talk about the time, which is really great and wonderful topic today, inshallah, I mean tonight, inshallah, Rabbil Alameen, Allah Azza wa Jal talks about the time and the importance of the time, with which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives us a beautiful and wonderful surah. It is surah Al-Asr. Well, Asr, Allah Azza wa Jal swear by Al-Asr, swear by the time itself. And the time, the most, the most wonderful and, and beautiful thing that we can, alhamdulillah, rabbil alameen, has the benefit of the time. Allah Azza wa Jalla said, inna al-insana lafi khusr. You know, all mankind, they are in lust. You know, and he swear by al-asr itself. He swear by, by the time itself. Illa ladina amanu wa amilu salihat. Except for those people who are, they believe in Allah Azza wa Jalla, and they do the right action. 
and the righteous action and the righteous work. The righteous work is meaning in the time. And you know, my dear respected brothers and sisters, that we born, the mankind born in a second, it's time. And we died in a second, subhanAllah al -Azim. And between these two seconds, there is a journey. Maybe it's long and maybe it's short based on the time that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala apply upon every one of us, upon every soul, upon every soul. Because Allah Azza wa Jalla said, فَإِذَا جَاءَ أَجَلُهُمْ And with the, their time coming, فَلَا يَسْتَقْدِمُونَ سَاعَةً وَلَا يَسْتَأْفِرُونَ You know, the, they cannot, we cannot take one more second or less second. Subhanallah al -Azim. So everything with the measurement from Allah Azza wa Jalla, وَكُلَّ شَيْءٍ عِنْدَهُ بِمِقْدَارِ you know, so Allah Azza wa Jal talks about the time and how, um, you know, uh, unfortunately, it is the most thing it can slip from our hands. It can just, we can, a lot of people that are wasting a time, waste and waste and waste their time. Even Allah Azza wa Jal teach the Prophet of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam to take time off and to work even at night, which he said to him in Surah Al-Muzzammil, بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم يا أيها المزمل oh who you it's meaning Prophet Muhammad be some blessing be upon him when he put himself you know with the, with the blanket so he said to him يا أيها المزمل قم stand up stand up stand up it's meaning pray to Allah سبحانه وتعالى be thankful to Allah عز وجل قم الليلة إلا قليلة I'm sorry. This cough never go. Uh, Dr. Abdul Rahim, we need to do it. We need to do something more than that for this coughing. That have been three give, weeks. May Allah give you shifa. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Dr. Rahim so, to write a prescription online. Yes, online. Yes. yes. <laughs> Alhamdulillah, with all your dua and, and, all, and all your uh, dua with us, Alhamdulillah, everything going to be okay. Inshallah, Rabbil Alameen. I didn't want to take like a lot of time Insha'Allah, Rabbil Alameen. But it is very important when Allah Azza wa Jal even said to the Prophet of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Ya ayyuhal muzzammil, qum al-layla illa qalila, except for like little bit, or make it as in half, or more than half, or less than half. So we have, alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen, to implement and to organize our time. May Allah bless you, my dear respected brothers and sisters. And back to you, Imam Ahmed, inshallah, Rabbil Alameen. Jazakumullah khairan, our Imam, mashallah, Rabbil Alameen. That's a good overview, mashallah, for the importance of the time that we had been gifted. And that is, before we listen to our Imam Hisham, I just wanted to tell you, no one had purchased this time from Allah. No one had paid for that time to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to get it. But you had been gifted that time. And you know what? One of the one of the things that we realized when when we are getting older and older, older that we cannot reclaim that time back, and we cannot ask Allah Subhanahu wa Taala to give us more. And also, one of the things that we cannot do that we think that you know what I have plenty of time, and that that term really I hated the most. That you talk with some of the young generations and they will tell you, no, don't worry, Imam, I have plenty of time. I, you know what? I'm watching that TV for long hours because I'm killing my time. And one day, one of the scholars were, were, was passing by some group of young men who were playing cards for a long time. And he said to his students, you know what? I wish that I can buy some of the time that they are wasting tonight. And actually it is the most precious commodity. And unfortunately we have lots of people devalue the importance of the time and they wither away their time. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us amongst those people that they realize the importance of the time. I wanna ask Imam Hisham that question. Imam Hisham, we have lots of texts in the, in the Sunnah of Rasulullah. When Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam encouraging us to, to, to invest each and every second in our time. And not only this, he's telling us more about the time and how Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala is going to ask us 
on the day of judgment about this time. That is one of the four spheres that Allah is going to ask us on the day of judgment about. Could you tell us more about this, our Imam? Jazakallah khair. Bismillah, alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salamu ala sayyidina wa habibina rasulillah sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sahbihi wa man wa ala. All praise is due to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We praise him, thank him, seek his help and forgiveness. Dear respected brothers and sisters in Islam, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. It's my honor to be with you tonight. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive our sins and gather us in his jannat. Allahumma amin ya rabbil alameen. The importance of time in Islam. When you contemplate the Quran, you find that it pays much care for the time, which indicates its importance. So we should utilize it for the performance of good deeds. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make, makes many artists, as our Sheikh Galal said in the Quran, with different timings of the day. In Surah Al-Fajr, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَالْفَجْرِ وَلَيَالٍ عَشْرِ By the dawn, by the ten nights. In Surah Al-Duha, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala swore by the early hours of the day. He says, وَالْضُحَى وَاللَّيْلِ إِذَا سَجَى Also in Surah Al-Asr, Allah says, وَالْعَصْرِ إِنَّ الْإِنسَانَ لَفِي خُسْرِ إِلَّا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَعَمْنُوا الصَّالِحَاتِ And to maximize the value of time, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala related the acts of worship with specific times. As for Salah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, إن الصلاة كانت على المؤمنين كتابا موقوتا which means that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala prescribed prayers and ordered us to perform prayers at specific times Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says prayer is obligatory for the believers at prescribed times إن الصلاة كانت على المؤمنين كتابا موقوتا as for fasting Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says شهر رمضان الذي أنزل فيه القرآن which means a specific time شهر رمضان الذي أنزل فيه القرآن هدى للناس وبينات من الهدى والفرقان الله says رمضان is the month in which the Quran was sent down as a guidance to mankind as for زكاة الله سبحانه وتعالى says وآتوا حقه يوم حصاده which means we should pay the zakah and we should pay what's due on the day of harvest which means a specific time as for hajj Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says al-hajj ashhurun ma'lumat al-hajj ashhurun ma'lumat the pilgrimage takes place during the prescribed months so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala related the acts of worship to the specific times so we should appreciate these times and take care of our time. The companions of the Prophet وسلم, as our shiuk said, they did their best to invest and benefit from every hour, every second in their life. They always recited the Quran, performed prayers, performed qiyamul layli, participated in the battles of the Prophet وسلم, They listened carefully to the sayings of the Prophet to convey his message to all mankind. They didn't waste any time, any second, any hour. Even if they have fun with their children and families, they teach their wives and their children the Quran and the Sunnah of the Prophet The Islamic Sira is full of many situations and sayings concerning the importance of time. Ibn Mas'ud radiallahu ta'ala anhu says, ma nadimtu ala shay'in. ما ندمت على شيء ندمي على يوم غربت شمسه نقص فيه أجلي ولم يزدد فيه عملي I do not regret anything like a day which ended My life decreased and I couldn't increase my good deeds أمان ست عامر بن قيس Come to speak together عامر said to him Stop or hold on the sun Which means if you could stop the sun or stop the time, I would speak with you. They didn't waste any time or any hour of their life. Al-Hasan al-Basri, radiallahu ta'ala anhu arda, says, Adraktu aqwaman 
كانوا على أوقاتهم أشد حرصا منكم على دنانيركم ودراهمكم I have seen people who were taking care of their time more carefully than the way you take care of your money. So the Prophet Sallallahu told the companions the importance of the time and they appreciated it. And they appreciated it and tried their best to do what the Prophet Sallallahu Wasallam has ordered them and taught them. So you should pay attention and take care of your time. Don't waste any second or any hour of your life because uh, as our Sheikh Ahmad Isam, you cannot purchase your time and you cannot have another life in this dunya when you when your time of death comes Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has taught us this will not change as he said فإذا جاء أجلهم لا يستأخرون ساعة ولا يستقدمون جزاكم الله خيرا ونقع بكم uh, the microphone is to you Sheikh Ahmad Isam بارك الله فيكم شيخنا ما شاء الله رب العالمين MashaAllah, that's a great overview, MashaAllah. And a great, you know, like he took us from the salah, the, the zakah, siyam, MashaAllah, to the hajj, to the rituals of Islam, how they are so connected to the time. And that tells us about the importance of, of the time, even in the Quran. And the examples that, are, that Imam Yisham had mentioned that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made an oath in the Quran in multiple positions with different timings, like shams, like the sun, like the moon, like the early morning, like the night itself. So we have a surah named after a layl, chapter named after the night time. And Imam Jalal, may Allah be pleased with him, mentioned Surah Al-Asr, Wal Asr. And you know, I have a, just a little bit comment on the time that Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala had mentioned. When you look at the translation, most of them roughly, they translate the word time and they say by the time, the word al-asr, and they say by the time. And they do not put or highlight that Allah had meant al-asr time. And because it has a significance and, and a wisdom behind it, Allah said by the time, which is al-asr. And why specifically, that Allah had chosen the time of Al-Asr. And if you started to think of this, by the time of Al-Asr, what is coming? What is coming? The night. And that means most of the day has gone. And on the time of Al-Asr, you see your shade is longer than the, 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 the noon time. And that means what is coming? is the night and your day has already gone. And that should remind you every day that my life had passed and I am about to come to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That is the end of my day, of my day. And why Allah followed this by saying verily, truly that the human being in loss because if you started to waste that time, you will be in a great loss. That's the reality. That's why Allah instructed us after this to follow and invest that time by doing four things. To believe in Allah, to act righteously, and to get the, the knowledge that will increase your relationship with Allah and to to, to practice that by having lots of patience in your heart. That is the summary of the surah that Allah is swearing by the time. And one of the things that I just wanted to highlight, because I believe that inshallah, we can find our young generation to watch this lecture one day, that they think, you know what? I can make up my time. I can restore my time. That's a delusion. One of the deceptions of the shaitan, that the shaitan comes to you and say, you know what? Whatever you messed, you can make it up afterwards. And you can find lots of young generations and they come to the imams and they said, imam, you know what? I didn't pray 
but I will pray afterwards. I will pray when I get married. I will pray starting Ramadan. I will try to come to the masjid when I get married. I don't, I don't understand what's the link of getting married to come to the masjid. But anyway, you find lots of people, they are you know, willing to kill the current time, hopefully that they will restore that time afterwards. But actually, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam elaborated the reality of the time when he said, Ni'matani maghboonun fihima kathirun min nas Two of the blessings of Allah that lots of people are squandering, are withering away, are wasting. And he said, as your health, and the time. Lots of people don't pay attention to the time. This is the time that Allah will ask you on the day of judgment about it. And you can find that in the hadith of Rasulullah You are going to be asked an umurihi fima afna. He will be asked about his time. How did he spend that time? And, and, and not only this, throughout the entire Quran, and we have our our brothers and our sisters, I, I might say our fathers and mothers here are watching me right now. And let me ask you that question, frankly. Do you think, do you think after when you reach to, to 60 to 70 years old, do you think that you could do the same effort as you used to do when you were, when you was young? Absolutely not. Because there is a certain limit, limited time, fixed amount of time that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had created us with that energy, with that power, with that, you know, a zeal that we can do lots of things. We can accomplish a lot of acts in our life. And that is why Allah said, Allahu ladhi khalaqakum min da'af. This is Allah who created you out of weakness, in a status of weakness. And after that weakness, after that weakness, he granted you power, strength. He granted you that energy that you can do everything you want. And listen carefully. And after that power, after that age of strength, he granted you weakness with gray hair. Allahu Akbar. This is the Quran. And that's why when, I, when you find lots of people are like, especially young, young generations, when they are like hustling, bustling, try to waste their time, try to, to do things which is, you know, has no benefit in their life. And they will tell you, you know what? I'm going to do that when I am getting old next year. No, if you have time, do something beneficial. Help people, help your parents, study something, learn something, try to get to know something new in your life. That is, that is how to invest every moment. And do not think that we are only talking about to pray at night or to, to, to perform certain rituals, which is something great. That is our purpose of life. But at the same time, I'm urging each and every one to do something beneficial because the general meaning of the worship, when you are doing something that Allah is pleased with, this is what we need to do. My brothers and sisters, Take care of that topic of that, you know, of that element in our life. I, I can see, as I said to you, that's the most precious commodity in our life. That's our life, basically. That's the time that Allah had granted us. Our Imam, Imam Jalal, I just wanted to ask you if there is any advice that you want to, before we listen to the dua of our brother Imam Hisham, 
if there is any advice that you want to share with us about the time. Yes, my brother, may Allah bless you, mashallah, Rabbil Amin, about this beautiful and wonderful topic, you and the brother Hisham also, and everybody attend at this beautiful meeting, mashallah, Rabbil Alameen. May Allah accept your good deed, and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gather us together with the Prophet of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in Jannat al-Firdaus, ameen, ya Rabbil Alameen. Uh, uh, indeed, that the Prophet of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he says, ma min sa'a, there is no an hour that they know the mankind or the children of Adam, which meaning us, meaning me and you, my dear respected brothers and sisters, you know, we did not mention or remind ourselves with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, except for we're going to blame ourselves in a day of judgment. This is meaning, and this is meaning that how very important to mention and to remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and how how much you can implement. Allah Azza wa Jal said, لَقَدْ كَانَ لَكُمْ فِي رَسُولِ اللَّهِ أُسْوَةٌ حَسَنًا You have, you have a great example. You have a role model of the Prophet of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. See what he did and we're going to do the same like him. You know, we're going to follow his footsteps, Subhanallah Al-Azim. When he and who is he? He is the very, very busy. We live in, 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 a, in, in a very, very busy life. Busy society, busy community. Some people with a lot of brothers and sisters saying, we don't have no time. Actually, we need to organize the time. And the Prophet of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he is the one who teaches us. He is the great messenger. He is the great prophet. He is the wonderful husband. He is the great dad. He is the great leader for the ummah. He is the great everything, alhamdulillah, Rabbil Ameen, taking care of, uh, of his companion, take, taking care of himself, you know. And more than that, he sweep his own house by himself can you imagine and more than that my dear respected brothers and sisters he is the one who teach us subhanallah al-azim how to make istighfar how to make to how to seek forgiveness you know more than 100 times and how to repent into allah subhanahu wa ta'ala more than 100 times a day or sometimes a time so how to organize our time our problem that we do not have time no our problem how to organize our time so, so I encourage you and myself to just organize our time, my dear respected brothers and sisters. Wallahi, we have a lot of time. Some some people, subhanAllah al-Azim, when they look at the Facebook, or they, they look in at the, the internet or the WhatsApp or all this kind, subhanAllah, or Snapchat or, or any kind of those today, they spend hours, hours. And I, I, I did maybe say to Imam Ahmed before that uh, my nephew, subhanallah al -Azim, sometimes he want to go to, I'm, I'm sorry, he want to go to the bathroom and he couldn't because he's just playing, playing the games and playing, Allahu Akbar. So my sister saying to me, can you advise him, say to him something? Because he, he, he couldn't even go to the bathroom. He, he doesn't want to waste his time for wasting his time. Allahu Akbar, for nothing. End of the day, what we get? Nothing. The Prophet of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he's not the one who talk and talk and talk and end of the day, we have nothing in our hand. No, he's the one who implement that in our life in order to be great example and a great model. Same like what Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala says. May Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala bless all of you, my dear respected brothers and sisters. I encourage you and, and myself, organize our life because our Islam is come to organize our life even the ibadah even the ibadah to organize our ibadah our worship you know our reading the quran just put you know and i i always say to my, to my students i say to them when the time of playing do not read quran do not pray do not do nothing except for you know, play enjoy yourself just play but when the time of the prayer coming with the time of the salah coming do the, the salah and when the time of make your duty as you know to reach or to to, to learn the quran do it subhanallah may allah bless you my dear respected brothers and sisters bless you my my dear respected imams imam ahmed and imam hisham may allah bless you amin ya rabbil alamin barakallahu feekum shaykhana jazakallahu khairan allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless you all allah amin and inshallah just before we listen to the dua inshallah wanted to thank all the brothers and sisters actually of course we start by our imams to thank them for their efforts may Allah reward them abundantly Allah ameen 
and uh, our our brother brother Imtiaz, mashallah, had joined our session. Brother uh, Muhammad uh, Nasr Muhammad and uh, and brother Muhammad Nasr Din and sister Azima, mashallah, also had joined our session. Mashallah, and they came. I think very early. Alhamdulillah to the session. May Allah bless them. They are watching us right now, both Brother Muhammad Nasruddin, Sister Azima, and Brother Imtiaz. They're watching us from Orlando. SubhanAllah, Rabbil Alameen. We have Brother, our, our Sharikh, Sister Bibi Jameer, MashaAllah, next to the Miami, MashaAllah, Rabbil Alameen. And uh, may Allah bless her and bless the entire family, Ya Rabbil Alameen. Sister Bibi Aisha also, MashaAllah, Sister Khadija Adam. Of course, uh, Dr. Rahim, May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless him and bless the entire family, Ya Rabbil Alameen. Our brother, Brother Fazl, MashaAllah, joined our session. May Allah bless him and bless the entire family, Ya Rabbil Alameen. Pam Khan also joined our session. Brother Muhammad, uh, Brother Muizuddin Ansari. May Allah bless him. And one of the things that I want to, and this is one of the, the good news that we try to share. And he said, SubhanAllah, Imam, we ask you for the dua, we ask you for the dua. Let me give you the good news that your dua or the imams and the, the sheikh's dua are working, alhamdulillah. He said the sister that we made a dua for her, she came out of the hospital and Allah granted her shifa. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen. Also his immigration uh, processing for the visa and the green card, alhamdulillah, everything went perfect. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen. That's a great thing that we hear about the good news from our brother, may Allah bless his son, Sa'ad, Allahumma Ameen, and his daughter, Maryam, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless them, Allahumma Ameen, Ya Rabbil Alameen. Also, uh, uh, we can, uh, I can see, mashallah, my son is here, mashallah, Muhammad Ali, not the boxer, no, but he's my son, may Allah bless him, Allahumma Ameen, and Rahma and Sanders. Also, brother Zaf from New York, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala shower him with his mercy, with uh, uh, Sister Nari, and also, uh, uh, brother Imran and Fazina and all the kids, mashallah, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless them. Sister Yasmin, brother Abdul Basit, mashallah, uh, my wife also in the, in, on Zoom, mashallah, sister Shayma and uh, Shaliza and Dean Ibrahim, sister Ruby Alam, mashallah, Rabbil Alameen, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless all of them, Allah Ameen. And one of the things when I say sister Shayma, it's not my sister, it's your sister. She's my wife. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us all. Allahumma ameen. Ya Rabbil Alameen. Yes, our Imam, Imam Isham, we came to the conclusion of our session in the dua. May Allah accept your duas. Allahumma ameen. Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammadin fil awalina wal akhirina wa fil mala il a'la ila yawmiddin. اللهم اهدنا بفضلك في من هديت وعافنا في من عافيت تولنا في من توليت وبارك لنا فيما أعطيت اللهم إنا نسألك علما نافعا وقلبا خاشعا ولسانا ذاكرا وعملا متقبلا اللهم لا تدع لنا في تلك الليلة المباركة ذنبا إلا غفرته ولا هما إلا فرجته ولا دينا إلا قضيته ولا مريضا إلا شفيته يا رب العالمين اللهم اجعل القرآن العظيم ربيع قلوبنا ونور صدورنا وذهب همنا وغمنا يا رب العالمين اللهم ذكرنا منه ما نسينا وعلمنا منه ما جهلنا وارزقنا تلاوته آناء الليل وأطراف النهار يا أكرم الأكرمين اللهم اجعل جمعنا هذا جمعا مرحوما وتفرقنا من بعده تفرقا معصوما ولا تجعل فينا ولا بيننا ولا حولنا شقيا ولا محروما 
اللهم إنا وقفنا ببابك راجين مستغفرين فاغفر اللهم لنا ذنوبنا واشف أمراضنا وارحم أمواتنا رب لنا أبناءنا وبناتنا يا رب العالمين اللهم إنا دعوناك كما أمرتنا فاستجب يا كريم كما وعدتنا اجعلنا ممن تجري من تحتهم الأنهار في جنات النعيم دعواهم فيها سبحانك اللهم وتحيتهم فيها سلام وآخر دعوانا الحمد لله رب العالمين جزاكم الله خيرا جزاكم الله خيرا our imam Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless you and I think that we had some cut in the interruption in the line um, and sorry for any inconvenience may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless all of us Allahumma ameen and accept the dua of our imam imam Hisham jazakum Allah khairan barakallahu feekum assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh alaykum assalamu wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh jazakum Allah khairan shaykhna